It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803-0930. Toll free at 1-800-616-9236. And cell calls are free at star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gullius. Hey everybody, this is the Tax Lady, and this is our hour to talk taxes and money. And I'll tell you, it wouldn't be much of a show without you, and we love when you give us a call. 803-0930, 803-0930, star 930 in the cell phone. And this being our um, off-season, what we're doing is we're talking today about budgeting. And obviously in your budget is going to be your taxes and everything else. And so it's kind of a spring, summer gear up. And sometimes the best way to have your your head get into the game is when somebody starts talking about it. And so that's going to be our subject for today. But I will tell you, if you are getting love letters from the IRS, haven't gotten your refund yet, wondering about um, any kind of tax situation, we would love you to join us here in studio. And speaking of in studio, we have uh, our, my two sidekicks, uh, Tiffany Fabian. Hey, Tiff. Hey there, Esther. And I just want to remind you that um, Mike and Glenn are having a seminar and we're fortunate enough to be a part of it. And just any listeners out there who are interested in, in their upcoming seminar, I think you could just give us a call during the week and we'll give you details. Or they can call Mike and Glenn's office too to, to register. And Christopher Fabian. Hey, Chris. Hello, Esther. How are you, Chris? Um, and so, okay, so think, well, before we get into budgeting things and, and our phone call, calls again, 803-0930, 803-0930, star 930 in a cell phone, and our toll-free number is 1-800-616-9236. And we love to hear what you have to say. If you have been somebody that has been positively affected by doing a budget or getting control of your finances, and I will tell you, uh, myself included. It's something that I just finished about two weeks ago, and which made a, you know, because we're always trying to think of, about things that would be interesting to people this time of year. And it just makes you feel so good to think that you actually have a plan. But if you have sp special tips you'd like to impart to us and you're listening, 803-0930, 803 star 930 in a cell phone. But before we get into that, Anything special at the office that people should become aware of? Things that, special letters that the IRS or State of New York are sending out? Well, I, I'm still contending with people who had 1095As and they're still not getting their refund for people who had health insurance. What are you seeing, Chris? Well, well, the, well the 1095A would be the people that, that got through the marketplace or money uh, or got help or got their uh, their health insurance through the New York State of Health right right and Chris what kind of letters do you see just still the withholding we want proof of withholding yeah on the state of New York <clears throat> well federal too I've seen a couple this week for the federal this year so so, it's, so th now if you're getting those kind of letters the l last thing you should do is ignore it and say well that's their tough bananas I'm not going to show them well then they're just going to hold up your refund mm -hmm. and right? you may not get that money so and you won't get the re you won't because they're just going to not until you comply they're not going to send the money out if you need help with that EG tax does not charge you for coming into our office on Niagara Falls Boulevard and bringing that letter and we will help you to to um Come, uh, put together a letter that answers the the questions that the state or federal is asking about your withholding or anything any other issue. Ignoring the letter does not make it go away. That's no. right. That's right. Right. Yeah, I, I I had another letter the other day. Somebody put money into an IRA and they were entitled to, and the IRS wanted proof that the money went into the IRA for the right tax year and things like that. So, you know, it's not just withholdings, but don't just ignore it. Right, and, well, and because if you ignore it, that that means that the it's like p playing tennis. They lob the ball in your court. You have to lob the ball back, yeah. or else nothing moves forward. And they are within their right to not to not issue the refund. Well, let's talk about budgeting and sp uh, spring budget uh, tune-up. And this obviously would include your taxes. So if you're somebody that would like to get a handle on your 
on your budget. We do not charge to help people to do budgeting, correct? That's right. That's right. The, I plug in the numbers and a spreadsheet that we have, and it's very eye-opening. And so it allows you to make those changes that you think uh, aren't occurring, but they might be behind the scenes. So a budget, is it's just very eye-opening. I know when we personally do one for Chris and I, you know, it's startling, <laughs> to say the least. Well, because mostly I think you, what you find out when you're, when you're tra tracking your finances is that you find out how frivolously we spend money. And then it's gone, and it's gone for something like a mocha latte, you know, which the only thing you have left is a receipt and five pounds on your derriere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I hope it's okay, but I wanted to say that Tyler, it's his last day of the show today. And Tyler, I think I've discovered you're pretty good with your money, right? What is a good tip you give? What's that? What's a good tip you give with your finances? Um, Trust EG tax? <laughs> no, save. Lots save. of saving. Lots Always of saving. a lot of saving. A lot of savings. Okay. Because he's very good. And, you know, that's, that's the thing, you know, talking to older people where their age, their, when they were brought up, they were taught to save. And yeah. they save and they save and they save. And the generations now just spend. Like I had a couple the other day and they're saying, oh, my, my successful kids are yelling at us because we don't have a mortgage out on our house and we want to buy a car and pay cash for it. And they yell at us because, no, don't use your own money. Use the bank's money. And so it's a totally different well, you know, it, that was especially a mantra we used to use uh, actually about 20 years ago because many people that are listening to the show will remember when interest rates were 15, 16, 18 percent. And so if you could, uh, if you had an 18 percent CD and you could borrow money at 9 percent, well, then you were making money off of money. But right now, you're very lucky if you can get 2.25 percent on a CD. Mm -hmm. So, and most your credit card debt is at 22, 23, 25 percent. Many people don't even look at what the credit card company is charging them in interest, and so you're way, way upside down. Yep. yep. Right. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, when you're now paying 24 percent interest to get the one percent, you know, that's not good. That's right. So anyway, so today we want to talk about budgeting or any kind of tax matter. And obviously, one of the first things you want to budget for is your taxes. So uh, and to reduce your tax liability, there are many ways. We're sending out a newsletter this week to all of our um, uh, cl our, all of our clients that are giving them tips on what they can do to reduce their tax liability for next year. And if you should want to sign up for our newsletter, it's a free newsletter. And all you have to do is go to egtax.com, um, and there's a section where you can ask a tax question. Just say, write a little note on there that you'd like to have be part of our newsletter, and we'll send you out a copy of it. And again, it's it's all all uh, budgeting tips, tax tips, things that you can do, things you can do to save money on your taxes. And this is the time of year that you would do it. Uh, in January, it's too late. You the the door like has Jake closed, so to speak. Yeah, right. That's right. All right. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. Eight zero three zero nine three zero eight zero three zero nine three zero star nine thirty on a cell phone. We're going to take a short break. We're going to be back on the other side with your questions, your comments, and with some budgeting tips. And um, and we'll see you in a minute. All right, Chris, you know who this, this is. This right? is T Swizzle Taylor Swift. Yes, and she's so cute. <laughs> she is. She looks. She looks like uh, apple pie to me. You know, and yes. I don't mean a slice of apple pie, but just like she's like so American. You know, we just really love her. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. We're talking about budgeting. We're talking about taxes. We're talking about anything that would have to do with money. Eight zero three zero nine three zero eight zero three zero nine three zero star nine thirty in a cell phone. And Brian has been holding for a while. And Brian, how can we help you? Hello. Hey, how can we help you, Brian? Well, it's the first time I've called. However, um, I'm disabled, and I'm disabled one of the family. My brother, okay. Um, but anyways, um, all my brother's listening. But, um, okay, um, they took my, my uh, life insurance policy 
for the four of us from my mom. But he took the money when we were up at the bank. And, um, you know, like, then he, like, God was irresponsible. Like, you know, like, that's what I feel. And anyways, getting to the point, though, some things about money are, um, I was wondering about a burial tr- burial trust fund, you know, like for my my going over two thousand dollars, we had to charge me all fifteen hundred dollars or something like that. Outrageous. Okay, so let me see if I have this right, Brian. Do you have a life insurance policy? My mother had a life insurance policy. I'm okay. His brother was irresponsible. And, and mom passed away, and, and you re- passed you re- away. Mom passed away last year. Yes. And so, but, what happened with that life insurance? Okay. And um. Someone suggested a while ago to get, to spend some of the money off to cut off is um, put money in a burial trust fund, burial fund. But didn't you say your mom already passed? No, I think this is for him now. Yeah, if he takes some of that money and puts it in a okay. burial trust All right. fund. So, so well, what you're trying right? to do is set aside money for your own burial? Well, they, okay, they suggested that a while ago to, so I don't get over or the limit. Okay. Dollars. Oh, okay. because he right. probably so has to maintain. Did your, did, well, like, what, yeah, like, was, you was the money distributed upon your mother's death? Yes. So you got you got your share of her life insurance, correct? I got fifteen hundred dollars. Everybody got fifteen hundred dollars from my side of, from my brother and sister. Okay. So all right. So here's the thing. Life insurance is a good tool if you really need it. Now, the question is, do, do you need that money, the money that you would have gotten from your mom's life insurance? is every? Do you have an emergency fund for you to live on right now? Well, it should be quarterly, $1,500 quarterly. Okay, so you got an annuity, right? You didn't mm-hmm. get life insurance. Mm-hmm. You actually got an annuity from mom? From you? Well, who's so paying when your mom you? Pa- passed away, did yeah. you, are you guys getting a distribution from her estate? Is that what you're saying? Correct, yes. Okay, so you're getting $1,500 a quarter, right? $1,500 for a quarter, yes. Every quarter. For the rest of your life or for how long? Um, probably just for this year. Um, anyhow, so you, I don't you, know. You really don't know, right? Well, it's $6,000 a year for... Four of us, fifteen hundred. So, okay. So this is what I'd suggest, and, and you, Tiff and Chris, you can help me along here. I think that Brian needs to talk to somebody in depth to find out, and it's kind of a budget situation where what his real goals are and mm-hmm. what his expenses are, and can he just get a term life policy, or is his is his disability so severe that he couldn't qualify? For a term life policy, uh, you know, to pay I, his final expenses. Right. I think I think his more question was to is a funeral trust a good thing because he can't have money sitting in a bank account. Am but I you right? see, that's where a budget comes in. It, does he? Ha- what is his source of income? Does he have needs now? That's just D and SSI. Right. 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 And I think and so I agree with you. The question is, what do you need now? How much would you want to put into a funeral trust? I mean, is that a good idea for Robert. you to do? How old are you? Those are things that I would want to know uh, before I would say. I mean, certainly if you have the money because you're alive now, right? You have the money right now and you have extra income, then I would say setting it aside uh, for a burial trust would be a good thing. But if you have, if you have med- ongoing medical needs, if you have expenses that you need to pay and you only have $6,000 coming in, you, you want, might want to rethink that to see if you don't need some emergency funds. So what I'd suggest you do, Brian, is to call us at the office on Monday so we could go over your situation privately, you know, okay. and ask you a lot of private questions that we wouldn't want to let the city of Buffalo know all about. <laughs> and um, then maybe we can help you with what you're trying to get at, okay? Hey, Brian, can I ask you, what's a good tool that you use for budgeting every week, month? What do you, what's a good tool for our listeners? I don't know. Write things down. Write things down, yep, yep. Yep. Um, and, um, can I say a little better note that um, I was thinking about going to Jake Wentworth. 
Just a joke, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> J.D. Wentworth, yes. Yeah, J.D. Wentworth will take part of your money, that's for sure. <laughs> that's okay, so let me tell you our, our phone number, Brian. 632-7886 is our phone number at the office. 632-7886. And then call, and you can ask for Tiffany or Christopher or myself, and we can ask you specific questions right, so and take a look at what you really are trying to get at, okay? to repeat the number. It's 632-7886. Seven seven eight six. Seven eight eight six. Seven eight eight six. Six three two. Seven eight eight six. And seven eight eight six. Six three two seven eight eight. I'm sorry. Okay, we're gonna put you on hold, and Jay, Jay's gonna help you. All right, good enough. Sorry to hear about your mom. Okay. Very sorry. Okay, I'm Esther Galias, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 and a cell phone. And we're talking about budgeting. And, you know, th those kind of budgetary concerns, like uh, what Brian was talking about, y y it, 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 your final expenses, except that you need to get to where there is a final, right? And so that there's a fine balance when you're doing your budget as to setting aside money for future expenses and taking a look at what your real needs are right now. And that's what we wanted to talk about with, with budgeting because it's money in and money out. Right. And we're and sort it of. It sounds like Brian is on a tight budget. Right. Right. His income is limited and he's limited to what he can do. And so it's. it's right. a... and, and then sometimes it's important too to have those conversations with his mom. I, I wonder what his mom's wishes. Sometimes mom wanted well, his him. His mom to, has passed away. I know, but what did she, beforehand? What did you know? Did she want him to pay off well, the know, house? A lot of families, so Tiffany, do not talk about these things. Yeah, yeah. I can think of a, a situation where I was talking to a close family member not long ago, and he said to me, "I could never have a conversation like this with my mother because my mother would think maybe I'm trying to pry into yeah. what she has." True. And, you know, it would be great. That would be another thing that we're talking about is that you would sit down with your family um, because death is in all of our cards. It's all something we all have to look at that that you could set aside money for your heirs and they would know what you're going to leave to them and um, what you have and where it is. Where, and more importantly, where, where it is, is and yep. things of that nature. Those are all important conversations that you need to have. Right. That's right. All right, why don't we go to Ed from Tonawanda. Hey, Ed, how can we help you? Yes, Esther. Um, my wife has uh, MS, and we're having a bathroom remodeled, and I was wondering, we're trying to get it remodeled to make it ADA compliant. Uh-huh. And I was wondering, is any of that uh, um, tax deductible? It would be if you're if you're making it a compliant potty a, ba a bathroom for a disabled person. So those medical expenses that you those are considered mer medical expenses. But um, Tiff and Chris, why don't you explain to him what he has to uh, he has to get an appraisal, an appraisal. First, right? Right. Chris. right. You got to know what your house is worth before you do it, and then what the house is worth after. So for an example, say your house is worth ninety thousand. After the improvement, it goes up to ninety-four thousand, but the improvements cost you twenty thousand dollars. You have to back away that four thousand dollars worth of uh, increase in the value of your home. So then you would be able to use a sixteen thousand dollars as part of your medical expenses on your Schedule A. Right. Okay. You you understand what he said, Ed? Uh, I think so. And, and in other then, words, let's say that the new bathroom costs twenty thousand dollars. And you call a realtor out and say, "Okay, how, here's my house now. How much would it sell for?" Like Chris says, ninety. After the bath, new bathroom, you call that same realtor out or appraiser, and you say, "What is it worth now?" They may say that with the grip bars and the uh, the you know the higher commode, et cetera, et cetera, it didn't go up in value at all because it, it would, even though it's good for your wife. It may not be a good selling feature, so it would mean the entire twenty thousand dollars would be a medical expense. But if the house went up in value, like Chris says, four thousand, then you'd reduce that amount that you spent on the bathroom by the increased value of the house, and what would be left would be the medical expense. 
Yeah, and I, I want to add also in there, Ed, that um, now is a good opportunity. If you guys do do this, you might want to consider married filing separate because the hill to get over for medical is much more achievable if you're a married filing separate couple. Well, so does some, she have income? Does your wife right. have income? No. Pensions? Well, 700 a month. All right, she has Social Security, right? That's all. Okay, so yep. that would not, not be, be the a... case. It's, it was a good tip to, to give that yep. everybody should always consider looking at married filing separately, but obviously the wife would have to have, income. Would have, to have uh, income in order to, uh, to take the medical on, on her situation. Well, right? can we take the medical off on uh, a joint account? Yes, you can take it off on a joint account. Now, and, and the other thing is if you filed married separate, if... Uh, of course, if you're paying for the, the medical expenses mm -hmm. yourself, then uh, you might get some benefit if the Social Security isn't, isn't taxable. But I think you have to look at it both ways. Right, Tiff? Yeah. Yeah. But to answer your question, Ed, if you do married filing joint, you can do medical if you have enough. It has to super exceed 10% of your adjusted gross income, and you have to be an itemizer. How much is that new bathroom going to cost, Ed? Itemizer. All right. Thank you very much. Ed, you're how much welcome. is the new bathroom going to cost? About sixteen nine. Okay, so in, in this situation, you will definitely itemize. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Ed. Bye -bye. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax eight zero three zero nine three zero eight zero three zero nine three zero star nine three hundred cell phone. We want to talk about when you're looking at a budget, you want to consider things of priority like housing. You know, um, are. It, are you, are you over your head financially because of your house? Maybe you should downside, sell, downsize or sell, refinance, especially people that have a mortgage and they plan on staying there in their house that would be over 4%. You might want to consider refinancing your house because you can go down to like a, if you've got good credit, 2.7, 2.8% in interest rate on a refi. So refinancing right now is a great time to do that. Uh, also, when you're looking at uh, your budget, you want to take a look at your, the, the vehicles that you have. Do you have two vehicles? Do you really need two vehicles? Right. Do you, are you driving newer cars, older cars, what the repair costs are? Those are all things to consider as well. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 your cell phone. We're going to take a short break for news. We'll see you on the other side. Gotta be Tyler. I, mean, I, was, I was hoping Tyler Sanders would play that because that's my favorite song. Tyler, who is that? That is the wonderful Pearl Jam. The Pearl Jam. Great. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. That's wonderful. I'm Esther Williams, <laughs> the tax lady, the EG tax. Uh, I didn't know about Pearl Jam. Uh, from EG Tax, and we want to help you with your taxes, your finances, budgeting tips, um, anything that would have to do with, with money. Uh, again, your, the show is much better when you guys call us, 8030930, 8030930, star 930, cell phone. I know that Peter was holding a long time, and he was wanting to have a question about a first-time home buyer. And I would say when you, the important thing for Peter, especially if he's a first time home buyer, the earlier in the mm -hmm. year as possible, when you're doing your tax return, you want to make sure you bring your HUD-1 mm -hmm. form in because on that mm -hmm. HUD-1 form are things that are only, that are deductible and only found on that form, such as prepaid, such as taxes that you reimbursed the seller that they're paying, uh, that, are, uh, that are deductible to you. So that's on your HUD-1 form. Uh, interim interest is on your HUD one form. P PMI. Usually, the points that are deductible, they're going to put on the, the 1098 form. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Your PMI that you may have front loaded, um, right. that's on there too. So there's a lot of information. Right. And, and so that's what you want to make. Sure. So he, that was a question, and he probably got tired of hanging on. So uh, and then, I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930. 8030930 star 930 on a cell phone. We're talking about budgeting, and we have uh, our next caller that's been waiting, and that would be John from Tonawanda. Yeah, hey John, how you doing? 
Good. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, what can we help you with? For my daughter. She spends about 13000 a year in uh, child care for the uh-huh. three grandkids. Yep. And uh, she asked me about that F, 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 FSA that... Uh, Flexible spending account for uh-huh. child care. Yeah. And um, I believe... Uh, my question is, I think it's capped off, and I also think the amount you can claim on... Income tax, when you item, itemize, is capped off also. Am I correct? That's correct. But she'll do better using the flexible spending account than she will if she takes the, the 2441 credit because the, the 2441 is capped off at for more than two children at $5,000. $6,000. $6,000, excuse me. But And the FSA, she's going to be able to, to get uh, uh, an absolute – credit a uh, uh, dollar for dollar deduction right up front so, to so as Medicare. long as she's using it for yes. her daycare then she'll be okay but is, isn't it capped off I don't right think- it's capped at five thousand but you still save your income tax you mm-hmm. save your social security yeah. tax your medicare, medicare tax and your new york state tax so and if, she, if her daycare is, let's say she does the 5000 through the employer, and let's say her daycare is 13000 like you're saying, right. she's still going to get the credit on the portion yep. that she wasn't, that, that wasn't through her, finan- her, her FSA Flex. plan. For the so thousand. the balance is going to qualify for the credit on the federal. Right, that was what I did. In New York. She take the A and mm-hmm. then use that for a write-off. She'll, yeah, but she'll no, be able the, to use $1,000 right, of the extra. She only can use 1000 of it. So she, there's no way she's going to be made whole yeah. either through the uh, flexible spending account or the 2441. But she's going to do better with the flexible spending account because she's going to save 7.85% alone in FICA plus whatever tax bracket she's in. Okay, so she should max out her, her on the FHA. Right, and then the balance she's going to be able to take on her 2441. 2441. Well, thank you very much. You guys. You're very welcome. Thanks for calling. We can. Thank you. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. Uh, and, you know, daycare is horribly expensive. That's just another one of those things when we're talking about budgeting that, you know, it, it's just extremely expensive to, to, to pay for, for daycare. Yep. Oh, daycare. Just that's one of the most major expenses there is when you when people go back to work after having babies. It's it's right. unbelievable what people spend. And you talk about budgeting that that will just blow your budget out of the water. You exactly you have right. to budget for that, or or you will be in trouble. That's right. All right. Let's go back to the phones. And we yeah have, we keep yeah. losing line one. We keep losing line one. And I asked uh, Tyler, and they're looking into it. Oh. Okay. All but, right. Good enough. All right. Well, let's go back and talk about our, our budgeting. Uh, when we were talking about housing, a reverse mortgage is something that is a great thing for certain people that are senior citizens who are in their home who need extra money. And that's a great tool. And again, if you are somebody that's in your home and maybe you have a small mortgage and you're making that house, you're making the mortgage payment, you might want to look into uh, a reverse mortgage where basically the mortgage company pays you every month to live in the house. Or you can take a lump sum of money out. That's right. It's, and you can live in the house as long as you want. As a matter of fact, they don't call the mortgage unless you leave the house for more than a year. So if you're living in that house for the rest of your life, um, the reverse mortgage is an is a great tool if that's if if that's fits into your but into your budget. Yep, you still have to pay the property taxes, obviously. But it's a, a lot of times when my clients will say, um, my 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 only concern is I will leave nothing for my heirs. But um, let's face it, I think your heirs would care that you're comfortable and you're in your surroundings. You can live. And again, it comes down to that individual situation where if. If you really are in a tight financial situation and you want to stay in your home, this is a tool that you can put into your financial toolkit. That's right. Right? Uh, Other thing you want to take into consideration is how much are you spending on food, eating out, getting coffee from Starbucks and all the other places. That's something you want to look at in your your budget, your utilities. 
what are you spending on utilities? This is a great time of year to insulate, yeah. and, to bring down that cost of your uh, your heating and cooling. And I know Chris and I, we installed a pellet stove, and that's been invaluable in reducing our heating and bill. It can, and again, you'd get the earned it, uh, not mm-hmm. the earned income, the energy credit. <laughs> energy credit. Yeah, right? that's right. If you haven't taken it before. I don't know if we should take line one before they drop off. <laughs> okay, all right. Why don't we go back to the phone? That's what Tyler says. And we got Patty. Hi, Patty. I'm Esther Golias. How can we help you? Um, yes, I have a question. I inherited a house, and how would that work if I sell it? You Did you inherit it, or was it gifted to you before the death of the uh, person who gave it to you? I, it was gifted. It was gifted prior to their death? That's what yeah. said. Okay, so if it was gifted, then your cost basis goes back to the fair market value that they paid for the house plus the improvements. If you had inherited it, you, you would get a stepped-up basis, which would be the fair market value of the house on the date of their death. So it's very important that you find out exactly how you got it, because if it was gifted to you, it's going to cost you some money in income taxes. And, and Patty, was it a house that your mom and dad owned or only one of your parents? Only one of my parents. Okay, because I was thinking the stepped-up basis, half of it. And so you, your parent, your mom or dad gave it to you before they passed? Well, they're still living, so... Oh. oh, okay. So, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so mom and dad are... Your mom is still alive, correct? My, and mom lives in the house? No, my dad is still alive, and I, I live in the house. I've lived in it the whole time. Oh, so you oh, live so. in the house? Yeah. Okay. Well, that then, throws uh, everything that, off. That's wonderful, <laughs> because if the house was gifted to you, but you lived in the house two out of the last five years, then there, the, and the gain is less than, I'm assuming you're a single lady, $250,000, you're not going to pay any taxes at all. Hey. Oh, I'm going to go play the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that because I lived there for 20 years. So if you lived in the house and they gifted it to you, if you lived in it two out of the last five years, you can sell it and there'll there'll be no taxes. Thank you very much, Evan. You're very welcome. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Well, that's a, that was a good thing that she didn't drop off of line one. That That's was right. really good. <laughs> Gave so, her and some that good news. to show you about the three streams of thought. When she said that she was gifted the house, all of a, I'm thinking that she that the, that somebody had passed away, but in essence she was living there, which would make it her own personal residence. Then the third one was if she had inherited it. That's right. And so those, you know, that's why it's so important that. Uh, and why our tax situation is so complicated because three in three dis- different scenarios that same house could be taxed three different ways that's right right that's right yep and so just okay. asking the questions is a good important thing and and you know listen. i'm esther Golius, the tax lady from eg tax 8030930 8030930 star 930 on your cell phone. We're talking about budgeting and taxes and any other questions that you might have. Give us a call. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Going back to our little budget thing. Um, so we were talking about this is time of year to insulate, cut those utility bills, your cable. You know, with especially people that are a little older, they wouldn't be familiar with Roku and some of these other uh, means of watching television. But the truth of the matter is, you can actually reduce or eliminate a lot of your cable bill. Isn't that correct? That's right. That's right. You know, if you're computer savvy, just use your your computer. You know, pay for internet at home. Don't pay for the the cable, and you'll save yourself a lot of money. And and there is and and uh, we use this in our offices, so I know that it, it is available. You can get a modified antenna. Which you can uh, use, and you can you will just get broadcast na- stations uh, two, four, seven, and twenty nine, and you it'll eliminate the need to have. Uh, uh, you mean cable you mean well. like like it used to be, like it used to be, <laughs> right? And so and these are HD, these are HD antennas, and you can get them. I think that what do we pay twenty five dollars for them? Something, Something like, like that. that. Yep. So I mean, you're not going to get all those other weird channels. Uh, and and I mean weird some of them, but it does help you to save money, and especially when you're on a fixed budget. 
uh, income. It's extremely important. So again, and again, anything that we're talking about, you can call us at the office and we'll give you the specifics. Right now we don't have time to do that. The same thing with cell phones. And another thing is if you're a senior and you have a, on lower income, you actually would, can get a cell phone at no charge. Yes, you know? that's right. That's right, so because it, they're, they're, it's considered part again, of safety. And, and then the other thing is look at your plans. Uh, I know my, my mom um, had her phone, her same phone number for I think 60 years, and she was used to paying a hundred and some dollars a month for her, her, her telephone, her landline phone. The, the truth of the matter is once, once we took a look at, every, at everything, we put it through her cable provider and her phone bill dropped from a hundred and some dollars down to like nineteen dollars. And you know, sometimes with technology, if one of the worst things is to just say, "Well, we've always done it that way." Technology has completely changed so many aspects of budgeting and and your and your fixed expenses. Yep. Right. Yep. Oh, definitely. Okay, I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 cell phone. We're going to take another short break. We'll be back on the other side with your questions. And uh, Tyler Samer, he knows what I like. That's right. I try sometimes. Mr. <laughs> Julius, the tax lady, 803 star 930 on his cell phone. We're talking budgeting. Wanted to mention, uh, we were talking about cables and uh, the cable in your cell phone and your land phone. Another thing that is a great tool for budgeting is insurances. Um, and specifically, term insurance is a great way, like our first caller uh, at the beginning of the show talked about uh, that he couldn't get insurance. But term insurance works uh, extremely well because it's a pretty low cost vehicle. And by the way, when your heirs inherit the money upon your death, it's completely tax free. It's a great way to help you with your estate planning. So if you're somebody that has an, that's going to have an estate liability, term insurance uh, can cover your estate taxes. And you just make sure that it's owned by the beneficiary so that they could use it to pay the estate taxes. So it's a great tool to put in your tool chest. Right. right? And, you know, with the estate taxes, too, there, you know, a lot of people are worried about them. But it's actually three and a half million right now for New York State before you have to worry about your estate tax. You know, in the federal's five million. So right. I'll and speaking of that, that's another thing when you're doing your budget. You know, you want to take a look at your investments. Do you want to start gifting the money? Do you want to put money into a trust? Uh, things of that nature. Again, you know, nothing happens until we decide to do it. And so, you know, getting your head in the game is the most important thing. And um, in springtime, it's a good time to say, you know, we need to sit down and make some decisions. What are we going to do? What's how are we going to modify our? Are we saving any money? Do we have? Do we have an emergency plan in place? Have we done a will? Is do should we gift our house? Should we uh, do a life estate? All those kind of things you should be thinking of. And again, if you need help, EG Tax will help you at no charge. Correct. That's, That's right. right. That's right. All we right. love to help people. Being All proactive right, is a good thing. Go, let us go back to line one. Robert, how can we help you? I'm using a nonprofit charity, Medic Alert Foundation, okay. and I wondered if that is a medical deduction, another kind of deduction, or no deduction at all. You know what he's talking about, right, you guys? No. no. We're looking <laughs> at each other. There, there is... There is charities that are set up to pay your medical bills, much like uh, any kind of health insurance, mm -hmm. and that's a, that's a qualified that's that qualifies for uh, for the health insurance under Obamacare. So it's a health insurance; and it's not it's a, a charity. Insurance. It isn't an insurance; it's actually like a co-op. That's what you're in, right, Robert? It's a service that will speak if I cannot speak to give the names of my doctors, my meds, my medical conditions. 
So Are, that's something, Esther, you write off that's, under that's medical. That's not what I was thinking at all. I'm, I'm unfamiliar with that. I thought it was the, the in lieu of health insurance, it's a co the co-op to pay your medical bills. So I, specifically, I don't know about it. Um, what, you, what we are willing to do and happy to do it for you, uh, Bob, is you can call us on Monday and we will do the legwork and make sure that it will qualify as a, for a medical expense. I will tell you, as long as it's helping you to alleviate a medical condition or is, use, is being used to help you in a medical situation, it should be deductible, but you'd want to make sure before you take the deduction. So if you want to call us, we'll do the legwork. I'll, I'll, I'll start Googling it right after we're off the air here. And maybe if we can put them on hold, uh, we could. Uh, be, could before we put them on hold, uh, Robert, what are some good tips that you use for budgeting? How do you go about doing that task? Monthly, yeah. have an allowance of how much I will have in checking, yeah. how much I will put into savings, uh, how much I will spend for food, household items. Yeah. Uh, I've been pretty strict about that since I was in my 40s, and I'm 70 now. Good right. for you. Yeah. Good, good for you. It's interesting. I was w having dinner with some friends last night, and they, we were talking about how no one saves anymore. There was a couple articles written uh, in the Wall Street Journal this week that says that that the millennia, millennials just don't save anymore. And, you know, that would be something I would ch uh, challenge anyone listening to the show is that, you know, this is part of what you want to do. You need to save for your retirement. So, uh, but anyway, if we could get the specific um, Details. information so that we can do the research for Bob and your phone number, we'll call you or you can call us yep. on Monday. So we're okay? going to put you on hold and Jay will get some information from you, okay? All right, thank you. All right, thank you. And, and, you know, like I said, th there are so many things under, uh, under medical that you'd be surprised. I mean, you can take expenses for sending your child to a special needs school if you have a special needs child. Um, uh, things as uh, um, unusual as uh, breast augmentation, for instance, if you, uh, if you have a robust but and it's, it becomes a medical if you have with back pains you know you're, you're, Pardon me? if you have back pains because of your thank you robust, thank you, you know. a robust bus yes uh, um but you know my, but one of my many, favorite many things are deductible yep. under medical Chris, yep. yeah one of saying? my favorite medical to always tell people especially when we teach is clarinet lessons instead of getting braces oh. that's true to to, 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 to suck in, to it must have gone yeah. to tax court, right? right? <laughs> yep, it yep. must have gone right. to tax court. Okay, let's go back to the phones and nobody. We have, do we have a caller? Nope. Waiting? No. Okay. All right. Let's go back to talk about our uh, our budgeting things. Uh, credit cards. I think this is probably the nemesis of so many people's budgets is that they get off track with credit cards and. The, the what a uh, technique that I know many people use is to pay off the the lowest balance credit card first, then next month pay take that credit that payment that you would have made to that first credit card and apply to the next lowest balance credit cards. And when you're done with those credit cards, cl close them, cancel them. Hasta so that la vista. Aren't tempted to use don't, them again. don't open them if you don't need them. I, I know. I mean, uh, we, Chris and I have a college child, and she gets so many credit card offers in the mail. It, it's bewildering. Today, she had an offer for a gold credit card for American Express, and I, I just it's well. It's, one good thing about the American Express card is you really are supposed to pay it off every month. You yeah. know that's what the the goal is. Uh, however, even American Express now is going will let you make uh, payments if it's for sign and travel. So. Uh, but again, credit cards can be a real nemesis. Now, if you're somebody that absolutely can't pay your credit card, the last thing you should do is take money out of your pension plan to pay the credit card because your pension plan is so holy, the state of New York will allow you to not even put the assets of your pension plan into a bankruptcy because they really want you to save for retirement. Yep. What you might want to do is negotiate with the credit card company, and then finally, if you can't pay, I, I have to tell you, you, you would think about uh, doing a bankruptcy first because you don't want to take money out of your pension plan to pay the credit card companies because all you're doing is spending the money that you should gone, have gone for retirement to pay for uh, your credit cards. But obviously, making that decision not to use credit uh, is a really important one for your budget. 
Definitely, definitely. Right. Okay, we can okay. fit in Steve from hey, Rush. Steve, Street. how can we help you? Yeah, how you doing? I have a question. Yeah. If you're married and you filed single one year, can you the following year married uh, file jointly again? Yes. You, you mean you used the filing status single? Married when you were filing married? separate, you mean? Yes. Can you switch back and forth one year? So did you ever file single or did you file married separate? Always my, uh, filed married. All right. You can use married separate or married joint anytime for each year. You can do one year married joint, one year married separate, depending upon your financial situation. You are not locked into that, fi that, that filing status of married joint just because you did it once. So to answer your question, you can change year to year and go back yep. and forth, Steve. I, I understand. I have one more quick question for you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, for a medical savings account, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago that you could make a one-time transfer from an IRA to a medical savings account. Right. Uh, HSA. Uh, correct. An HSA, well, right. It's but it's limited to the total dollar amount that can be contributed to that to, uh, under normal situations to your uh, medical savings account. So if it's 6500 that's all you can transfer in. Right, but uh, once you hit 65, you can't use your medical savings account, although you can't contribute to your medical savings account, but um, you still can. You still have a medical savings account. Right. Right. It turns into almost like an IRA. Right. That's exactly right. But at that time, could you still transfer money from your IRA to your medical savings account? You can do a one-time You can do a one -time election, provided you're not on Medicare. And it would seem to me at 65, you would be on Medicare. That's correct. So once you're on Medicare, you can't do it anymore. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. All right. Oh. Thank you. Good I'm Esther Gulley, the tax lady from EG Tax. If you need any kind of tax help or financial help, budgeting help during the summer, EG Tax is there all the time. I will tell you, anytime you're going to do a finan anything financial, you can just email us through the website, uh, ask the tax lady at egtax.com, and we will get back to you right away uh, before because after you take the money out of your uh, your IRA, after you buy that asset. Uh, that you shouldn't buy. It's good to have somebody to 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 bounce Run things, things off by. of, so yep. that you don't you don't make a mistake. And EG Tax is there. Until next week, I'm Esther Golius with Christopher Fabian and Tiffany Fabian. Have a great week. Hope it gets warmer. Bye bye.